Uh, welcome to another Psychic Diaries. Um, I'm Michael Lamport, the uh, producer and narrator of the Psychic Show Rescue Mediums. And um, with me, as always, is Jackie Dennison, who is uh, the host of Rescue Mediums and also the uh, owner of uh, Feathers Academy um, in Northwich, which is in the north part of um, England. As, and speaking of the north part of England, we're very lucky to have with us um, Jay Lane, who is uh, in the north part of Ontario, um, about four hours north of me. And um, again, I will apologize for my hair because, uh, because we're in lockdown here and all that sort of stuff in Canada. But um, it, it's, it's our pleasure to, uh, to welcome, um, welcome Jay to the show. Well, welcome, thank Dre. Thank you very much for having me here today, Michael and Jackie. It's it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, I just got. I, I'd like to start off with one question for you. When was the first time that you had any uh, sort of psychic experience? Like, like, and what was it? Well, I have to tell you, it's right after a near death that I had, and my mother always believed I was like this because, you know, it goes back in our family, but it was after a near death experience that I had when I was close to four. I had fallen into a, a lake off of a large embankment with a tricycle, and I had gone underwater, and I was there for a while. Um, when I woke up from my experience, I was in the hospital, and I felt different. I don't know why, but I just felt really different. And I knew that something terrible had happened to me because I was in a lot of pain, but I didn't exactly know what had happened. Um, but my very first experience to see spirit, I believe, was when I was nine years old in a grocery store. And that scared me quite a bit, actually, because I didn't know what it was, but I felt familiar with it, which is really strange. Well, what was what was spirit doing? I mean, well, I was, was standing. Shopping? Well, I was in a lineup with my mother and father. You know where they put the groceries on these these uh, I don't know these belts. And I was just standing there, and there was a lady in front of us. And right away, I saw this man beside her. But it was just from the waist up, which was really strange. And I knew right away, oh my god, like there's something wrong. And then right away, I could feel him. It wasn't like I was hearing anything, but I could feel him. And inside my head, I kept on hearing him say, and that means you have to eat. And then he called her Twin, which is a nickname, a French nickname. And so I, I started to cry. And my mother asked me why I was crying. And I said, Irene has to eat. And the woman turned around. She goes, I'm Irene. Why are you telling me I need to eat? And I said, Jerry says, you need to eat. And that was it. She cried. She left the store. She left everything on the belt. My grand, my father grabbed me by, by the collar. And, um, you know, and then my mother ran outside, you know, to go console her. But later on, and many years later, I found out that her name was Irene. Her husband's name was Jerry. He had died three years before. And that she had not been eating because she didn't have enough money. And she was buying groceries with the very little money that she had to feed her three kids. So it always had a great effect on me as I grew older, just to know that that that's what I was seeing. Wow. 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 Yeah. That, that's incredible. You know, there's a saying out of the mouth of babes, and that really was, I mean, you were so young to have just said that, to have felt it, and then to have, did you realize it was spirit that was giving you that message? I knew that I could connect to it. I knew I was different. I just oh. knew all of these things, but I didn't know how yet, you know, because you're yeah. so young. I know that I got a licking when I got home and my father told me for a couple of reasons. A, you don't talk to strangers. B, people would think you're oh. crazy, so be quiet, you know. So I learned to be quiet after that until yeah. I was about 15 or 16, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because I'm, um, you know, talking to a lot of different mediums, they have similar experiences around that age. I know I was eight when I had my first conscious experience with spirit in that way. Um, and then like you, you sort of, you, you put it to one side until I was sort of 14, 15. So about the same, mm -hmm. you know, we're psychic friends, you and I. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> 
but I never forgot that lick-in and I always was told that I was going to get locked up in North Bay and North Bay mm. is not far from here. It's a place that has a huge psychiatric hospital, but I didn't know until I was about 15 what North Bay was and I always thought I was going to go to jail, <laughs> you know, get locked up, but I found out, but it's, it's really, you know, it, it was quite the experience, I got to tell you, and it's still it still affects me to this day, even though I was so young, you know. Mm. Wow. And your mum uh, was uh, psychic also, I believe. My mother was a practicing psychic between 1961 ah. and 1983. Hmm. And she used tea leaves. She wow. had learned to read them when she was very young. My mother left home at the age of, I think it was 11. And she had to go work. That's the way it was back then. So she came to live with Chinese people. Hmm. And the Chinese people, my mother learned to speak Chinese fluently. She was fluent by the time she was 16. And uh, she learned to read tea leaves through the Chinese people, but she was gifted with it. And they always told her that she was a seer. And uh, she had started doing her business in 1961 because it was better than babysitting children, she said, <laughs> because her mind was too busy with the kids around, you know. And so that's what she did. But she was amazing. And many times she'd help the police to find bodies. So it was amazing. She was very good. Wow. Oh, wow. So did she guide you? Uh, with your psychic development? Yes, she always told me I was going to do this and I always denied it, you know, mm. and it's funny because I refused to do it. I worked for the government. I used to work for an agency that investigated police officers. I worked at the Crown's office. I also worked with victims of crime and I worked in sexual assault murder trials. That's what I mm. used to do. And the thing is, you know, for me to go from that to quit my job, I had three years left to retire, and to become who I am is because of my mother's death. My mother made me realize after her death that really this is this was my path and this was really what I was supposed to do and why I had all these experiences in between. But she did guide me. She taught me quite a bit. I mean, our life at home was all about you know, hearing, seeing, sensing, trusting your intuition, going with the gut, never mind what people think. Mm. so thankful for her yeah so you, you, you believe then obviously because i believe this too um that like going with your gut is like really important like if you feel something like go with it because you don't know where it's going to take you is that would you agree absolutely absolutely you know every time that i didn't I always said to myself i wish i would have followed my intuition and now i do without a mm. doubt yeah do you work um, with a spirit, a spirit guide? You work, like I, I work with directly with my spirit guide all, all the time, every day. And then I have different ones that come in and out, depending on what kind of work I'm doing. Do you do you work in the same way? I don't. I'm going to be honest. I was never trained with books. I was never trained. I was always trained to just trust my gut. And my mother always told me the ones that need to speak with you will come. And so I never, and sometimes, and, and I'm sure you went through this too, Jackie, sometimes you don't know who's speaking with you or, or what's oh, coming, yeah, sure. where the source is from. But I always trust that it's from a good source and I always ask for, for, you know, guidance when I'm doing something, but who I'm asking, I don't know. I always think my mother and father are around. Yeah. No, I think it's always good, you know, to, to know that, to know that they are guiding you uh, in that way. Yes. Um, and yeah, there are many different sources of uh, inspiration that come to us for whatever it is uh, we're doing. And I would like to ask you as well, because I've watched some of your shows that you've done on your website. Your website is brilliant, by the way. It's really Thank very, you. very informative um, in a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm absolutely uh, in awe of you going onto a stage in front of thousands of people Yes. And you give such accurate messages, which must be very, very rewarding for you to, to uh, see that being, you know, um, received in such a way like that. It must be really rewarding for you. And I, I admire you for doing that. I absolutely love it. You know, uh, I, I make sure that I have no assigned seating. Um, it's one of the things that I love to do and I just you know my very first show I was very surprised they told me I'd be speaking to 50 women 700 people showed up 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. The second time they asked me, we were expecting 700, 1100 showed up. And so the thing is, and it was only my second time. And I was, I mean, I'm a government worker. I used to investigate police officers and work in courts. But the thing is, it's, it's just for me, it is very rewarding, especially when you can give such specific information mm -hmm. and they really know who's talking or they really know who's around with that, you know. And, and the thing is, for me, it, it's exhausting because, um, you know, I'll do five, six shows in a row when I'm on the road. Mm -hmm. But it's a labor of love, I got to tell you, it is. I just yeah. to see those smiles, the closure, the letters that we get. I mean, I, looking yeah, it comes the across, letter. that comes across, you know, when you're doing a one-to-one -one reading uh, with uh, people as well, because I've seen uh, some of those uh, clips that are on your website. Yes. Um, and um, the amount of uh, love and joy that comes from the person that you're doing the reading from and the look of astonishment on the faces when you give some because you're very down to earth when you give a reading you are very very you know there's no airs and graces it just comes out as it is yes. and so you tell it as it is so if you're talking to someone in spirit who was quite colorful with their humor you will repeat what they're saying to you but it's yes. exactly what they want to hear isn't it because that's who that person is that's how they know them it, it, it is, you know, I remember walking beside one woman and I told her, I said, your mother loves my boots. She goes, oh, my mother was a boot freak, you know, she loved her boot. And then I said, your mother died at 8.15 a.m. How do you know that? That wasn't in her bit. And I'm thinking, you know, we don't have time for that. You know, as well as I do with this job, you are so busy. You're working 18 hour days. You don't have time for that. But the thing is, I... I, I don't know, I just, I love it. But the loudest spirits speak to me. And when I hear something, I just repeat it. Like when Michael said, you gotta trust your God and just do it, that's what you have to do. Even the cursing, or and I, I don't like cursing. I always tell people, you know, when I do a show, I may say the odd curse only because of what I'm hearing and I'm gonna interpret it that way. But when it comes out and they say, that's my husband's favorite saying, or that's exactly what he's saying, or this is what he did, it, it just gets point it gets a point across and I, I love it you know but I, I try to be as human as possible I mean I've been through a lot in my life as well there's certain experiences that I've been through in my life that have been difficult and when I'm feeling that way I know that person's been through the same or something similar mm -hmm. and so for me I think that if I could just express it and you know just say the way it is i remember and i don't know if you saw this clip jackie but i remember seeing a lady online and i just i put a link out there and i just asked people to come and see me so i don't know who's going to come and see me and i pray to god they're all going to be nice uh, <laughs> come on this one lady right away i knew that she had been sexually abused between the ages of six and twelve i knew that she had been hanging on to that and just that five six minute reading with her her husband actually understood exactly why she had been like that mm. all her life and it answered so many questions he had no idea and she couldn't open up but i mean i didn't even know the woman's name and this is coming out and you could see her emotions you could see her falling apart but then you could see the relief you know mm. from from finally letting that go. This woman wow. must have been in her 50s. She's hung wow. on to that all her life. Wow. And you talk about soul journey. So that would be, you, you talk about soul journey quite a lot, don't you? So that would be part of her soul journey, understanding that yes. part of her journey. Yes. And I believe in the soul's journey very much. So mm -hmm. I believe that before we come here, we make agreements with other souls to go through certain life experiences. And in her case, you know, she could have chosen and her father could have chosen this experience to go through together, you know, in a loving agreement before coming here. Now, it's not so wonderful when they're here because we're here to learn emotionally, physically, and mentally what we want, what we don't want through these experiences, yeah. but it's what we do with it. Do we take that pain and help others, you know? And I yeah. believe that's why people go through all of these experiences ultimately is to help others. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, amazing, uh, really. When, when, the, 
when they, the penny finally drops and they go, yeah, I understand that. I understand why that happened. I understand what's been going on with me now. And it must really open up new doors of opportunity for them it then. Does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yes. I believe so too, because it's like, it's like, having a band-aid on on a cut and it's been festering mm. for a long time if you don't take that band-aid off it's going to get infected mm. but the minute you take that off and it comes to air it has a chance to heal because it's come to light or it's come to air so the thing is i always equate it to that same type of thing and i think that day she took her band-aid off mm -hmm. and so she's uh, been in communication with me since i've gotten to know her uh, oh, this particular lady that we're speaking about but she says it totally changed her life in seven minutes. And, wow. and for me, that's the biggest gift I can get. Gosh, absolutely. Yeah. I, and you're not afraid of talking about death, are, are you, either? You, you talk about that quite a lot on, on your website. I do. Um, and about how people can cope with the thought of dying and, and coping with death as well and that's quite um that's quite bold because a lot of people it's a too to like a taboo subject isn't it really and yet it it's is. something that we're all born to do you know yes yes yeah. but you know i noticed that with a lot of the mediums that i've had readings with because i absolutely love all of my mediums and um there's so many talented and gifted people out there but i noticed a lot of them didn't touch on death they wouldn't talk about the actual death itself mm -hmm. and you know it was so important for me because when i died i went to the most amazing place and it was really not that bad so what i did was i learned a lot um about consciousness when i was younger mm -hmm. and our conscious being our subconscious being our unconscious being and how that works what it's like to feel dead, what it's like to be dead. Um, so I explain that to people. And then we go into the whole soul's journey right through to the death. And it makes their lives just easier to live, knowing that there's a purpose to all of this, knowing yeah. that there's life after. I call it before life, you know, yeah. before we come <laughs> here and then the afterlife. But yeah. it's virtually the same place, you know, and, and the thing is, I think it just makes people's lives easier to navigate because they know where their loved ones go when they mm -hmm. die. They know they're always around them. Yeah. And so you experienced that when you were four, when you, you said, you, you know, you felt death and you experienced yes. that. And that's when you were four years old. Yes. So what yeah. did it look like? What did, what did that look like to you well, as a four-year-old? I remember falling into the water with this tricycle and I remember being in a lot of pain because I had broken my shoulder and my ribs um, oh, wow. you know, with a tumble before I went into the lake and then of course the water's going to my lungs and I was so tangled in this little bike that I couldn't get out of it. Mm. I don't remember anything after that physically with the exception of like opening my eyes and feeling like the sunshine had come through the water to pick me up if that makes any sense yeah that's how I felt and then all of a sudden my grandfather and my brother were there and it oh. was like I knew them forever Jackie and I never oh. met these people my grandfather died in 52 my brother died in 1953 years before I was born oh. and I knew everything about these people as though I had lived a lifetime with them so I believe that even though we don't know you know, our great grandmothers or grandfathers, that kind of thing. I still believe that they're always around us and that when we reconnect, that we're going to know who they are and we're going to understand their soul's purpose. Now, I do remember being with them. Um, I remember some key things. Um, my grandfather had showed me a few scenes of my mother with a very large tummy crying at a train station. And I didn't never understood that until I was about 12 and I had a conversation with her and I said, why, why did you, why did you cry at the train station? Like, why, what's this thing with the train station, the big belly? And she had told me that my grandfather had died on an operating table in Toronto and they had transferred his body by train mm. uh, here uh, to the city. But they had telexed her back in the 50s. They didn't have faxes and that. They had telexed her to tell her to go pick up her father, but they forgot to mention he had passed. Oh, wow. And, yeah. My mother was pregnant for twins. And they were oh. combined twins. She didn't know. They were stuck at the back. Mm. So my grandfather, of course, she experienced that. She went into shock. She went into the hospital and um, 
you know, shortly after gave birth to these twins and one didn't make it, the other one lived for six months and he died in 1953. So I believe those are the two people that I saw, but it was funny because my grandfather fell to his death. Like he fell off a large scaffold and mm. I believe, and I fell off a large embankment. So I think that's yeah. why he came to get me. It's weird, wow. but I always believe that. Yeah. Wow. It's sort of like a history repeat, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it very much is. I see a lot of patterns, even in my life with my mothers, you know, so you're right. Mm. Well, Michael and I are really um, interested in sort of past life uh, things. Uh, we often have discussions, don't we, Michael, about yeah. uh, past life experiences and things like that. Um, and, and so uh, soul groups of people uh, will find them you know, you'll find that soul group of uh, of people, won't you, throughout your yes. lifetime? So, um, do you believe that your your grandfather and your brother have been part of your past life connection as well as this life? I believe so. Yes, yeah. I believe that I'm part of their soul group somehow. I yeah. do. Yeah, and I do believe in the soul groups, and I do believe in past lives as well. I believe in recycled souls, as I. Oh, call we them. we have to get together more often and do more of this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I just want to talk about as well, really briefly, is something else that really, uh, uh, Michael and I are very interested in this subject only because of the work that we do on rescue mediums in particular. And that is that you, you one of the uh, topics you cover on your website is about Ouija board. Yes. Um, and yeah. Yeah, again, it's very refreshing that someone is addressing this on a website where they, you know you, you can get a balance, balanced information about a Ouija board because I know um, one of the first things that Michael and I ask when we go into properties is have you ever used a Ouija board because it gives a different dynamic to how you're going to um, handle um, you know a rescue or investigation so um, ju just so other viewers know what is your opinion on Ouija boards? A Ouija board on its own is really not dangerous. Oh, you know, it's a tool of divination, as you all know. It's been around for a long time, right. but it's the way it's used. Exactly. Some people have no no experience with them. They have no respect for them. Oh. Or someone that's very sick will work with one and or work with somebody else who they have absolutely no knowledge of their spiritual beliefs or non-spiritual beliefs, you know. And so if I'm using a Ouija board with somebody that believes in evil, that's not a person I want to be using it with. No. So I think it's the intention in which it's used that could be very dangerous. And the thing is, I totally agree. I also do the same, Jackie, um, when I have someone coming um, to see me and they say, you know, I've been experiencing a lot of things in my house. Mm -hmm. So right away, we're trying to determine whether they're grounded spirits, whether it's something that was conjured through a Ouija board, or, you know, is it, you know, just residual energy? Is it poltergeist activity? Because wow. I do a lot of like that type of stuff as well. But a lot of people that use the Ouija boards have problems because they don't know what they're doing yeah. or they don't know how to dispose of it or they oh just God. think it's nothing they just ah, it's just a toy the thing is it's a gateway to so many different unknown types of energies and when you're playing with that you can invite in through so many different things so i tell people before you use the ouija board if you're going to use one read all the rules and regulations. There are so many of them. Make sure that the people you're using them with have a good belief system and make sure that they're not sick. If someone is terminally ill using that, it's, oh my goodness, but well, you understand Jackie. Oh you yeah. Know? Yeah. So the thing is for me, um, you know, I think that you know, they just have to really be careful. I've had a lot of people say, well, I have one. It doesn't do anything. Well, if you don't use it, it won't. You know, it's like anything. But the minute you activate it, I do believe that it can invite what you don't want. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay, so um, I think uh, that, well, the message is to get as much information beforehand if, you, if you're going to use one. What absolutely horrified me, um, um, Michael knows this, is we'd gone um, uh, into the first time I came to Canada and I could see that them in toy shops. Ouija boards into, I was like, oh my God, 
pink ones for the little girls, blue ones for the boys. And it's like, do they not realize how dangerous these things can be if they're okay. used in the wrong way? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's all about education, it's, isn't it, with anything? It is. It's, it's more information, the more you're armed with it. Yeah. And it's how to dispose of one as well if you're having problems. And I address that in, in my blog on my website because yeah. so many people have had these issues, you know. And so there's a right and a wrong way of doing it, as you well know. Mm -hmm. And I've watched you several times, you know, and I know you do it the right way. But a lot of people just don't understand it. And so, you know, you play with fire. Sometimes you're going to get burned, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everything is about education, including, if I may just talk uh, a minute, about your book. You've brought a book out, I believe. Yes, I did. Dying to Know. Hmm. And, and so I'm excited about it. It's just really a comprehensive overview of, you know, why you're here, the before life, the here life, and the afterlife. Hmm. And basically what happens um, to your soul when you die and different types of uh, ways of dying and what happens with the soul as well. Mm. And how, how can people get hold of that? Well, they just have to go over to mediumjlane.com at the bottom of my bio page. Right. They can go and download. Um, it's a free, actually, it's a free ebook, but oh. it's really quite informative. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I think that it addresses um, a lot of questions that people have, especially when someone um, just dies, you know, or if someone is dying, a lot of people that are close to death have mm. uh, told me that they really enjoyed the book because it gave them kind of an overview without putting any emotion to it, what happens. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, Especially you. with murdered souls or, or people who have terminations of pregnancies or suicides, mm. you know. So, uh, Michael, that that is probably something that... Um, would really interest you um with yeah. um uh, yeah i hope you don't mind me saying about this but uh, michael's brother was murdered um and i know you've had questions around that michael haven't you yes i have and um uh i mean i'm i've tried to uh, communicate with him um but n not to any avail at this point but yeah, he was uh, he was shot three times in the back. Yes, and um, along with his business partner, the son. And um, Sorry. yeah, he and he was murdered. And uh, anyway, it, it was just obviously it was very strange. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe that book um, that that may may answer some questions for you, Michael, if you were to yeah. download that and uh, read about. I certainly will. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I do talk about murdered souls and yeah. what are you Yeah. And uh, I find it interesting, you know, like it's not something I discuss a lot, but I was held up in 1997 against my will and um, with a gun. And it took me a half hour to break away from that. But mm. it's how I feel when people have had this or, or energies come through right away. I usually feel threatened, but I would think that he comes through for you, Michael. I, I, I do. So the thing is, maybe you can't feel him, but I believe he's he's around you. So oh. just to let you know that. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. But now, when, um, when you say uh, murdered, pe uh, murdered people and, and going to the afterlife, what about, um, I don't know if this is sort of lame or uh, banal, but what about people that commit crimes like murder yes. and they pass i mean i, I believe yeah. that they trade off their soul i don't think it's part of a soul's agreement to commit a murder i don't and i i get a lot of flack for that from other mediums because a lot of other mediums do believe it's all part of the soul's agreement mm. and you know i agreed to be murdered that day i don't believe that i don't believe oh. it's part of the five exits of leaving so mm -hmm. when someone commits a murder, they're breaking their agreement as well, because it's not on the list of how to die, as I say it. Yeah. So when someone murders somebody, they've just traded off their soul. So that person that was murdered dies, they go straight through to the other side. They're never upset with anybody because they don't have the ego anymore. But at the end of the day, the person who commits that murder may go to jail, may not. 
But when they cross through to the other side, I believe that they have to serve time. Grounded. Oh, yeah. yeah, I believe that. And oh, so God. they have to step in the shoes of the soul that they had an effect on. And when you're in that realm, you still have an ego. The soul still has that partial ego. Ego is still part of that human. And it's, it's half and half, as I say it. It's hard to explain. But I believe that they feel their own pain along with the pain of the person that mm -hmm. they took that life away from along with everybody else. Because that soul's agreement has been ended. So, you know, maybe the person that was murdered was supposed to have two children, was supposed to do this, was supposed to do that, but never had that realized because the soul was taken so quickly, you mm -hmm. know. So I do believe that the person that commits that murder trades off that soul, stays grounded until they're able to be able to, uh, how would I say it? They're able to cross through, but it, it could take some time. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's almost, uh, it's almost karma-like, like, like it, it's almost karmic for, it for, the, for the person that's committed the crime. It is. Yes, absolutely. I mean, they may not feel it here. Some people get away with murder. Yeah, you get away with it there. Let me tell you, you know, yeah. the thing is, it's just not part of the agreement. So I don't believe it's on the on the list of dying. You know, the five ways of dying. There's accidents. There's, you know, even suicides for me are broken agreements. But the thing is, those souls usually cross through a little quicker because a lot of people that commit suicide have mental health issues or really depressed or mm -hmm. have some. You know, it's so sad to see that they have to go through all of this. But murder is yeah. different. It's a very selfish act. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah, I can, uh, I can, I'm totally with you on that one, with the sort yeah. of uh, pattern uh, and it being a karmic uh, sort of uh, uh, thing to have to go through. Absolutely. Yeah, I but believe the, that as well. So the other thing as well that you have uh, produced um, is your oracle cards. Yes, I love my oracle cards. Actually, I have them right here. And they're absolutely beautiful. Lori Lowenberg, um, she's my buddy. And it's funny, I have a little story about her. She's a dream expert out of the US, as you well know. I know Lori. I, yeah. I did a show uh, about her called In Your Wildest Dreams. That's right. I stayed at her, her place. Oh my and, gosh, she's amazing. Yes, yeah, she is amazing. She's a beautiful girl, and I absolutely love her. We met a few weeks after my mother died. My mother used to interpret my dreams, so I told her to bring me somebody. And Lori asked me uh, to be a friend on Facebook. And then a few days later, she asked me to do a radio show with her about dreaming of the dead. And it was really quite amazing, um, you know, and I started following her. I was looking at her art um, one day, and it was a woman underwater that had drowned. It was actually such a beautiful painting and, and it made me feel differently about my own drowning you know because I always felt terrible about it but she actually made me feel better about it and I thought oh my goodness your, your art's so amazing so I asked her if she would draw draw my cards and so she she oh, did and she's a beautiful beautiful artist this is my wise old owl I love him he's gorgeous um, isn't he beautiful yeah. but I mean I love this. This is my manifestation card. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. The genie in the bottle. Love That's it. Exactly <laughs> what it is, honey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, and look at this one. Oh, goodness. Just look at that. Isn't yeah. that beautiful? Yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful cards. And so, you know, lock and keys. We oh. had different things. And I wanted to do something that was very simple for people uh, oh. to understand because they tell me, oh, you know, I bought tarot deck. And it's like, oh, my goodness, it took me four years to get my master's in tarot. I can't even <laughs> imagine someone just learning it overnight, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I decided to do this. And so the idea behind this was the white dot yay, the dark dot nay. In ah, case yeah. Meanings. Uh -huh. yeah. So that people would get understand it. But there's a spirit message with every card, an upright and a reverse meaning. And every single card has a gemstone. Obviously. The gemstones to help you. So it, it, for instance, Ruby encompasses unconditional love. Yeah. You know? uh, the genie in the bottle, we have Peridot, which is the stone oh, of abundance, love it. Love it. diamond clarity, and citrine just to absorb negative energy. Mm -hmm. And so they're beautiful cards, but Lori and I have been really good friends for the last nine years. 
and um, she's just an amazing person. And so we still work together. She appears on some of my shows uh, and I appear on some of hers and I'm just very blessed to have her in my life and part of my life. Fabulous. Well, uh, next time you speak with her or communicate with her, um, say hello from me. I'm going to, I'm going to tell yeah, because, her. Uh, I haven't seen her, I think it's been two years since I've actually seen her. Wow, well, she's and, doing well. Uh, I think she's, she's amazing. Yeah, she is. She's a beautiful girl, inside and out. And uh, yeah. she's she's been on so many television shows and radio shows. I mean, oh my goodness, but she's quite the portfolio, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love her too. But she's she's got a really good heart. She helps people through dream readings, which is really nice because she explains the psychology of it. You know. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love I, you know dreams are fascinating things absolutely I, I love to work uh, in dream state whether it's um, information coming from spirit or whether it's you know us interpreting our own dreams and working things out you know that we can't work out in the daytime we work at night so they are, yes. they are fascinating things and you've got some really good things coming up shortly you've got um, a few different is it the um, uh, ex spiritual excellence of Halo Awards that's coming yes, up yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Halo Awards. I'm really actually quite excited about it, yeah. you know, um, because they have they have different nominations in like different fields, like coaching, artistic, um, you know, because some, some mediums draw and, hmm. and draw spirit and different things. So they have an artisan award. They have um, speak, like special, not, can't talk today, special speakers. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to be entertaining actually. And so I was asked to, to do readings and to entertain that very large group of psychic and mediums. So I'm really super excited about it. Wow. So, that, yeah. that's, that's really, really good. And it's great that, you know, people are honored in that way in this field. I do believe that too, you know, I remember seeing about it last year and I met one of the founding um, members of the Halo Awards, Amber uh, mm. Price, and she's a beautiful girl, but I met her when I did some shows down south with James Van Prague last year. Mm. And so she was the host, she had hosted us and, and um, introduced both of us on stage, which was really beautiful. And then I started learning a little bit more about her awards and different things like that. So we started working together and and doing little things together and she's really um a beautiful person and she's got a lot of uh, light to her you know she's full of piss and vinegar as we'd say up north here <laughs> <laughs> but i really really like her and um so i'm excited to be entertaining all of these psychics and mediums it's really quite an honor actually fabulous and then you and I are going to be doing some uh, work together, aren't we? Yeah, with yes. Amber as well. I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, so that is is the 15th and 16th of October, isn't That's it? Right. Which, which yes. is um, the 2020. Uh, uh, Canadian Mediumship Summit, which is I'm really looking forward to because that's the first time I've been involved. Oh, really? I'm excited about it, too. I get to do the platform section, mm -hmm. you know, the stage work and, and that. So I'm really looking forward to it because so many people want to break out into those areas but really don't know what to do. So I'm really, really excited. I think it's going to be great for Canada uh, to have that. We have so many different ones all over, but really we haven't had too much in Canada. So wow. I think it's a group of amazing women and great teachers and leaders. So I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to be doing a workshop um, on the Saturday, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Of course, I'm in England and that's happening in Canada, so we've got a, a, a time difference. So, yes. yeah. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm on early in, I think it's 10.15 uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time, which is sort of 3.15 in the afternoon for me. So, so it's not but, too bad. Yeah. So but you won't be sleepy works out well yeah <laughs> awesome. yeah i'm really really excited about it as well so i'm looking forward to the two events actually and i'm getting ready to film as well i'm starting a series very soon so oh doing, wow yeah we're doing a couple of episodes i signed a contract with the producer out of uh, canada and we have uh, my management is in the u.s so we mm -hmm. have like uh an agreement between the two countries and so we're going to see what happens with it but i'm really quite excited it's it's been under development for about six or seven months and now Ooh, can you tell us some more about it or are you not allowed to tell us yet no no it's okay i could talk a little bit about it but it's yeah. very different it's it, unscripted totally i didn't I love want it. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't want anything scripted at all. No, um, you know, and so I wanted everything. And it's going to be like a road show, but also uh, filming, you know, interactions. So, and what's nice is that we go to different locations, but I don't know who's going which is really going to be quite great. So I think it's going to be um, amazing. And they're going to be doing filming segments in between too, because, you know, you stop, you talk to people at the gas station and right. this happens and that happens. And yeah. so you always giving out messages. You understand that Jackie? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go grocery shopping without it being a three hour event. You know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you I know? look forward to that. I will really look forward to that. I'm excited yeah, seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you deserve that. It's 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 good that um, it will be um, uh, between uh, the USA and with Canada. That's a great balance there. I think so too. You know, I think we they're they're looking at uh, the producer that I have already has shows out on on some major networks. So mm. I'm very excited, and he's a very big fan, and so it made me feel good. He come to see some of my shows before, so I had no clue who he was. And then we got to talking and knew each other. So it's it's really great. So I can't complain at all. I'm it's just meant so to be. He's in yeah. your soul party and that is meant to be. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm I'm super excited. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna go really well. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a different concept. And yeah. uh, so I'm 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 embracing it. Well, I will be a very a British and I'll say the very best of British to you with that show oh, thank you thank <laughs> you very much coming from you it's an honor oh <laughs> well do you know it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you today we've thoroughly enjoyed it and um hopefully we can get to talk to you again when the show's up and running you can tell us how things are going that would be amazing i'd love to very very much okay my darling well we shall say goodbye for now and thank we'll you very you much Thanks, Have a beautiful Jay. day. Thank you, Michael. Jackie, pleasure. And it was really great connecting with you.